Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about conditional and biconditional statements in logic. So let's get started with the following do now. Let the statement P be X is a prime number and the statement Q be X is less than four. What is the truth value of each statement shown below when X is the following. So here we have a table with different statements symbolically uh, with either and or or, and some of these are negated as you can see with various X values. Uh, and by the way, just to clarify, a prime number is a number that it can only be divided with itself or with one and that's it. For example, two is a prime number, three is a prime number or of five or seven. So let's do the first statement here. So the first statement would be two is a prime number and two is less than four, okay? So all we did is just replace the X with two in this case. Okay, so the question is, is it true or not? Well, then you analyze each individual statements. For example, two is a prime number. Yes or no? The answer is yes, so it's true. And then we have two is less than four, so that's also true. Now we learned in the last lesson that in a conjunction, when both conjuncts are true, then the conjunction is true. So here we just write true, okay? Now, what about the second statement? True or false? Well, let's first write it out. So here's the second statement. Zero is a prime number and zero is not less than four. Again, let's analyze each conjunct. Is it true that zero is a prime number? The answer is no, because again, a prime number is a number that you can divide by one, but also by itself. And you cannot divide anything by zero, even zero itself. So the first statement or the p-value is false. Then we have zero is not less than four, okay? Uh, by the way, when we say not less than, it means that it's greater or equal to, but we will learn that in the upcoming lesson because it has something to do with the trichotomy postulate. But anyways, that statement is also false, okay? So now we have a conjunction that is actually false because both conjuncts are false. So we write false here. Okay, now the third statement states not P or Q. So what's the statement in this case if we substitute X for four? Here we have four is not a prime number or four is less than four. So that is interesting now. Because the first part where it says four is not a prime number, that is actually true. But what about four is less than four? That's definitely false. However, now we have a true statement or a true disjunct and we have a false disjunct. So basically we have true or false. But what happens to the disjunction though? Well, it turns out that in a disjunction, you only need at least one of the disjuncts to be true for the disjunction to be true. So therefore, that statement is true. Finally, we have not P and not Q for when X is equal to six. In this case, the statement would be six is not a prime number and six is not less than four. Again, let's analyze that. Is it true that X is not a prime number? The answer is yes, it's true because six cannot be a prime number because we have factors such as two and three. Uh, what about the second statement? Six is not less than four. Well, that is also true. Again, six is greater or equal to four, so that is true. So now we have a conjunction where we have both conjuncts to be true, therefore, the conjunction itself becomes true. And that is the answer to the do now. Let's look at an example now that is going to lead us into today's lesson. 
The statement is, if it rains tomorrow, then I will give you a ride home. So there's clearly a difference here than what we have learned so far. There's no and, there's no or, but we can see that there's something else. There's an if statement and a then statement, okay? Um, again, we can split the statement into two different statements with P and Q as follows. So P can be the statement, it rains tomorrow. And let Q be the statement, I will give you a ride home. So now, if we want to use the statement, if it rains tomorrow, then I will give you a ride home, then we need a special symbol for that. And the symbol is an arrow going to the right, okay? Notice that the word if and then are not part of the statements P and Q, okay? So this type of statements, when you have an if then statement, that is referred to as a conditional statement in logic. So in logic, a conditional is a compound statement formed by using the words if, then, to combine two simple statements. And the symbol for if, then, is the arrow going to the right. Now, what is special about conditional statements is that these conditional statements have an hypothesis and a conclusion that we'll be referring to. First, let me uh, show you what the hypothesis and conclusion is. So let's say we take, if it rains tomorrow, then I will go give you a ride home. So it turns out that if you take, it rains tomorrow, just this one, that is the hypothesis, okay? So let me write that in, hypothesis. And I will give you a ride home, that is the conclusion. Notice that if is not part of the hypothesis and then is not part of the conclusion, okay? So we're going to use the word hypothesis and conclusion in today's lesson when we're generating the truth table for conditional statements. So let's get to it. So let's say that we want to complete the table here, okay? And again, the goal of this table is to generate a truth table in which we have true and false statements, depending on the various P and Q values if each one is negated or both of them are negated. So let's take the statement, if it rains tomorrow, then I will give you a ride home, okay? Let's say that that statement is true. Now, when we want to identify the truth value, always ask yourself, you, will you be disappointed with that statement, okay? You can also think of the following, that this is not an exclusive statement. It doesn't say, only if it rains tomorrow, then I will give you a ride home. No, it's not saying that, only if, but just if it rains tomorrow, then I'll give you a ride home. But anyways, what would be the second statement? The second statement would be, if it rains tomorrow, then I will not give you a ride home. Quick question, is the statement true or false now? Or will you be disappointed? Or can the statement be valid based on the first true statement? Well, the answer is no, right? That is a false statement, right? Because if the person uh, promised you that he's going to give you a ride home if it rains tomorrow, and then you're not getting a ride home, you'll be disappointed. That is false. Okay, what about the third statement? If not P, then Q. Well, in that case, you would say, okay, if it doesn't rain tomorrow, then I will give you a ride home. So this seems strange because, okay, you're not disappointed, but it doesn't seem that he held his promise, right? Or did he? But anyways, think again of the following. It's not an exclusive statement. It doesn't just say only if it rains tomorrow. No, it doesn't say that. It just says if it rains tomorrow. 
But if it doesn't rain tomorrow, guess what? You'll still get the ride home. You're not disappointed. And therefore, the truth value is true. And finally, if you negate both P and the Q, you have the following statement. If it doesn't rain tomorrow, then I will not give you a ride home. Now, what about that one? Is that true or false? Based on the promise of the first statement, well, obviously, you're not disappointed because that's what you expected, right? So therefore, that statement is true as well. So notice that the only one that is false is when you have a true hypothesis leading to a false conclusion, okay? It's kind of like a lab experiment where you have a hypothesis, you have a certain expectation of an outcome, but then the outcome or the conclusion is false, right? Therefore, the entire experiment didn't work. Therefore, that's the only one that is false, okay? So let's summarize this. So here's the truth table for conditionals, okay? So the summary for this is the following. A conditional is false when a true hypothesis leads to a false conclusion. In all other cases, the conditional is true. Let's look at another example. Here we have a table, okay? Here we want to determine the truth values, okay? But now what's interesting in the fourth column that we're switching the Q and the P, okay? So the third column is pretty simple. So we know that this is true. We learned that this is false. This is true. And this one is true as well. But what if we swap it? Well, in this case, this is true. Now you're going from false to true. That is true. And then you're going from true to false, okay? You're going from right to left, from Q to P. Now that is one false as well. And then we have true here, right? Okay, now what we want to do is take the conjunction, the end statement of the third and the fourth column. What are the truth values here? Okay, so this is true. Now here we have a false and true. That is false. Here we have false as well, and then we have true. So it turns out that this statement here is a new type of statement, which is called the biconditional. So let me introduce you to the biconditional. A biconditional is the conjunction of a conditional statement and its converse. Now, if we go back, this one here is the conditional and the one in the fourth column is the converse, okay? Just to make it clear. Now, if you take again the conjunction of the condition and the converse, that is called the biconditional, okay? Now, in mathematics, again, we don't like to write too much, so that's why we're abbreviating the biconditional as a different symbol, and the symbol is this one, okay? P with a double arrow and Q. Now, if you see a double arrow every time, that is called biconditional. Now, how do you uh, speak or how do you phrase it out, the biconditional? Well, it's simply P if and only if Q, okay? And I'll show you an example on this now. A real number is positive if and only if it is greater than zero. Now, why do we want to use an if and only if statement here? Because what that means is that it's actually true for both the conditional and the converse of the statement. What I mean by that is the following. So for the conditional statement, we have if a real number is positive, then it is greater than zero. So we know that one is true. And the converse stating that if a number is greater than zero, then it is positive. Again, the conditional is true and the converse is true. So we have the conjunction of both the conditional and its converse that are both true, okay? That's why you can write it as an if and only if statement 
or biconditional, and it becomes true. Now, what happens if the conditional is true, but the converse is false? Well, in that case, then the biconditional is false. And how do we know it? From the truth table that we generated before. So let me show you the truth table again. Okay, so here's the truth table, okay? Um, so again, if you look at the last column, the entries are true, false, false, true, okay? So again, um, in this case, the conjunction of the conditional and converse both need to be true for the biconditional to be true, okay? That was in the previous example that I just showed you on uh, this one with the real number and if it's greater than zero or not. Uh, however, it also turns out that if both of these are false, then the biconditional is also true, okay? So both of them are false, then the biconditional is true, okay? So let's summarize everything in another table using the double arrow, okay? Okay, so here's a more condensed version of the biconditional table. Again, if you have P and Q values with various truth values, okay, though that's the entire uh, possibilities, then you have for the biconditional, true, false, false, true. So what do you notice here? Is there a rule that you can somehow remember here? Well, simply that uh, if both statements, the P and the Q are either true or false, then the biconditional is true, okay? So we can summarize it as following. Um, biconditional is true when both statements are either true or false. And by the way, what I wanted to say about biconditionals that a lot of definitions in math are biconditional statements, okay? Um, and by the way, also with conditional statements, a lot of the theorems that we will be developing here in geometry are actually conditional statements. So you're going to notice that theorems are conditional statements, definitions are mostly biconditional statements. That's why this unit is very important because it will um, introduce you or give you a better idea to uh, the upcoming lessons of geometry, of the postulational system of geometry for next unit, okay? Okay, so here's a summary of today's lesson. All I want you to remember is that conditional statements are false when a true hypothesis leads to a false conclusion. In all other cases, the conditional is true. And you can see here from the truth table that this is actually the, the case. Uh, and then for biconditionals, from the truth table, you can see that a biconditional is true when both statements are either true or false, okay? So again, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please post a comment to the YouTube video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And otherwise, have a wonderful day.